And so that brings us to the end of our an introduction. And I want to make a brief conclusion, primarily to give you some next steps, other things that you can do as you learn to work more with R. Now we have a lot of resources available here. Number one, we have additional courses on R in datalab.cc, and I encourage you to explore each of them. If you like R, you might also like working with Python, another very popular language for working in data science, which has the advantage of also being a general purpose programming language. The things that we do in R, we can do almost all the same things in Python. And it's nice to do a compare and contrast between the two with the courses we have at datalab.cc. I'd also recommend you spend some time simply on the concepts and practice of data visualization. R has fabulous packages for data visualization, but understanding what you're trying to get and designing quality ones is sort of a separate issue. And so I encourage you to get the design training from our other courses on visualization. And then finally, a major topic is machine learning or methods for processing large amounts of data and getting predictions from one set of data that can be applied usefully to others. We do that for both R and Python and other mechanisms here in Data Lab. Take a look at all of them and see how well you think you can use them in your own work. Now, another thing that you can do is you can try looking at the annual R user conference, which is user with a capital R and an exclamation point. There are also local R user groups or RUGS. And I have to say, unfortunately, there is not yet an official R day. But if you think about September 19th, it's International Talk Like a Pirate Day. And we like to think because pirates say R. And so that could be our unofficial day for celebrating the statistical programming language R. Any case, I'd like to thank you for joining me for this. And I wish you happy computing.